Swedish houses today are built to the world's highest standards, yet their construction costs up to 27% less than their conventionally built American counterparts. The key is not technology alone, but a well-organized, effectively managed building process. The lower construction cost results from increased productivity, not from skimping on materials or quality of workmanship. Be it a fancy house in an upscale neighborhood or a simple starter home for a family living on a modest income, the finished product scores high marks for structural integrity, energy efficiency, and quality of finish. In fact, these factory-crafted houses represent a whole new category of housing, far removed from manufactured or prefab housing in the American sense. We are on our way to watch a factory-crafted house going up. It is a few minutes before 7 in the morning. Just-in-time delivery in action. A truckload of house components arrives at the site and the construction crane is not far behind. The foundation may be prefabricated. Reinforced concrete panels set in place by a crew of three men and a crane in less than a day. But any other type of foundation built to the proper tolerances will do. Today's three-man construction crew begins by laying out a broad gasket atop the foundation. The sill beams go down over this gasket. All components interlock precisely. The crew takes time to measure and adjust components before fastening them. These houses are built to very tight tolerances, on the order of one millimeter or about one thirty-second of an inch. Laxity in the beginning means that some of the components will not fit as construction progresses. Floor joists, now being lifted in by crane, interlock with the just installed sill. No joist hangers, no cutting, no fitting. As a rule, two men work on the structure. A third on the ground attaches materials to the crane's hook. But nobody is ever idle. While the joists are being placed, our ground man uses the lull to install perimeter insulation. This will become the subfloor designed to be dropped into place by a single worker and requiring no nails or staples, it will take less than 10 minutes to complete. Made of tempered hardboard about three quarters of an inch thick, it supports the weight of workers. Uniformly sized sections fit exactly, resting on a ledge on the bottom of the floor joists. The system permits insulation of the floor from above rather than from below and saves field labor. A smoother, more attractive basement ceiling is ready to be painted. Another rubber gasket is stapled to the sill. Gaskets between components have virtually replaced caulking in Sweden. This saves labor and provides a tight, non-degrading seal. The sill rail is another interlocking device that must be carefully aligned before fastening. Meanwhile, the crane is busy loading materials needed later to finish the interior onto the floor deck. Done before the walls are raised, this job is quick and easy. In conventional construction, nearly half of all labor is devoted to materials handling. In Sweden, such tasks are done by machines. Hand carrying materials at the building site is mostly a thing of the past. The just installed sill rail will interlock with a gasketed groove at the bottom of each wall section. But it is now 9 a.m. We started exactly at 7, a mere two hours ago. Yet the floor deck is completed, the subfloor has been laid, and even the materials needed later in the interior have been stacked inside. While our crew takes a well-deserved coffee break, let's look in on a factory or two. This is a small panel line, small enough to be lifted into place by hand. No need for a crane at the building site. On the other hand, there will be more pieces to handle with more joints to seal. The semi-automated line is operated by two people. One lays out framing members and starts the assembly on its way. Machines automatically fasten the frame, add exterior sheathing, and flip the assembly over. The second worker adds insulation, electrical conduitry, and a continuous plastic vapor barrier.
Here, human intervention ends. Machines add interior sheathing and stack completed wall elements for shipping. The production rate is about two and a half minutes per wall panel. Panels with windows and doors are produced at a different workstation. Most factory-crafted houses are now built from large, wall-sized building elements lifted into place by crane. They're made the same way as the small elements we've just observed. Factory automation varies. However, heavy lifting, precision cutting, fitting, and repetitive operations like hammering and stapling are performed by machines even in the least sophisticated shop. The worker's chief role is quality control. Notice the windows already installed in these wall sections. This is a key feature of the Swedish system, but more on this later. Hand tools are used only in finishing touches. Thanks to precise tolerances, even trim pieces can be pre-cut by machines. And now the walls are ready for shipment. Just in time, too. Back at our building site, the coffee break is over. The first wall section usually contains the electrical panel, which must be in place by 10.30 when the electric utility will hook up power. The crew carefully aligns each wall element. Flexible bracing permits adjustment as subsequent panels are lifted into place. Corner sections are connected by sturdy steel braces and self-starting bolts. Gaskets between panels ensure a tight seal. Separate corner pieces will complete the job. The walls are standing as we break for lunch. This story and a half home resembles a Cape Cod design. Trusses make up the second floor, similar to those used in the United States. Too bulky to travel over public highways, each truss was shipped in two sections, which must be connected at the building site. Observe the efficiency of our crew. One man on the ground sends trusses to the other two, positioned atop the structure. Pre-marked trusses and walls allow speedy, accurate installation without the need to measure. Notice the absence of tool belts. No on-site cutting and fitting. No need for bulky tools. Our men carry only assorted nails and a hammer. These wooden braces temporarily hold the trusses in place until the roof is installed. The trusses are heftier than a typical American truss, permitting wider spacing. This saves material and labor without weakening the structure. All trusses in place, the gables follow. Normally, they come fully insulated. However, this homemaker wants to finish the second story himself. Still, the window has been installed, and the crane lifts in all materials before the roof is closed in. No outdoor storage of building materials. No need to lug anything upstairs by hand. We are now near the end of an eight-hour workday, but it is raining. The crew holds a huddle and decides to stay on and close the house. This is entirely their decision. They have no supervisors to consult. The tempered fiberboard used on the roof has no structural function and its light weight permits quick and easy installation after the crane has departed. These hefty horizontal battens will provide plenty of structural strength for the concrete tiles, a roof surface with a virtually unlimited, maintenance-free lifetime. The tiles come in a choice of patterns and colors. Fighting rain and wind, our crew struggles to cover the roof as fast as possible. The missing battens will be added later, once the roof has been completely covered. After a start at 7 in the morning, our house is closed against the driving rain by 8 p.m. Allowing for lunch and two breaks, this 1,400-square-foot home was weather-tight in about 12 hours, or 36 man-hours. The crane spent less than eight hours at the site. Before departing, the crew locks the house and leaves a spotless construction site, with nothing stored outdoors.
It will now take the same three-man crew around seven working days to finish this house for occupancy. Nobody else will be involved. We have just seen one way to build a house. Other factories use panelized floor elements, complete with insulation and subflooring. Roofs may also be panelized, complete with insulation, gasketing, and battens for the roof tiles, eliminating the need for trusses and much labor. Subcomponents like dormers also come pre-built, ready to snap into place. Some factories build completely finished volume elements, or modular housing. These units are delivered in several sections, completely finished inside and out, and ready to move in a day and a half later. In spite of limitations in design flexibility and increased shipping costs, about 5% of new Swedish housing is now being built this way. Besides the speedy and efficient quality construction we've just witnessed, factory-crafted housing is known for its broad design flexibility, low energy consumption, and most of all, the overall economy of the building process. Factory-crafted housing has evolved in response to the drastic housing shortage of post-World War II Europe. Many good quality dwellings had to be built quickly, efficiently, and affordably, with no way to store building materials safely outdoors. The worldwide energy crisis of the early 1970s has added another requirement, energy efficiency. With rising energy prices, only energy-saving houses can be considered affordable. The factory-crafted house meets all these expectations. This is why it is in demand around the world, from England to Japan, and from the United States to the refugee camps of Ethiopia. The potential of this flexible building system to help solve America's growing housing problems is beyond question. Mm -hmm.